Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. A couple weeks ago I uploaded a video explaining how to make an auto bed leveling system for your CR10 using an Arduino Nano. Since then I've been working on several things, but probably the most relevant at the moment is a version of Marlin 116 that works on the stock CR10 board with this auto bed leveling system. I've put a link to download that version of the firmware in the description below, but before you try to install it, you will need to write a bootloader to your board if you haven't already. If you've watched any of my previous videos about the Monoprice Maker Select, you may have caught one where I explained how to burn a bootloader and update the firmware on that printer using an Arduino Uno. The process on the CR10 is pretty much exactly the same, but if you've already bought a pack of Arduino Nanos, there's no reason for you to have to buy another Arduino just to burn a bootloader to your CR10's board. There are several options for how to accomplish this, including a USB-powered ISP programmer, but if you followed either of my guides on using an Arduino Nano or an Arduino Uno to act as an intermediary between the sensor and your printer, then you've already got the tools necessary to burn a bootloader at hand, and there's no need to buy anything else. If you own an Arduino Uno, or you're planning on using one for the quick and dirty auto bed leveling method, then you can go follow the steps in the video I made about burning a bootloader to the Monoprice Maker Select. However, assuming you followed my guide on soldering wires into JST connector to the Arduino Nano, I've modified the Arduino ISP sketch that comes with the Arduino IDE to make those connect to the pins on your CR10's main board so you can use it to burn a bootloader. What does that even mean? Yeah, that was pretty much confusing as hell to me when I first updated the firmware on my Maker Select, so I'll try to explain a little bit better in case you haven't been doing this for several years like some of the more veteran makers. For starters, as I said earlier, before you can write new firmware to your printer, you will need to burn a bootloader to your printer's mainboard. The bootloader acts as a software interface that allows your computer to write firmware to your printer in such a way that your printer knows how to use that firmware. It's sort of like an interpreter who works for a company. If a company wants to do business with foreign countries, they'll most likely need an interpreter to help them communicate. Otherwise, without some level of communication, there's pretty much no chance of successful business arrangements ever happening. The problem with some 3D printer boards is they don't have a bootloader pre-installed, and your computer doesn't know how to communicate with them in a way that will allow you to install one. This is where the ISP programmer comes in. For our purposes, an ISP programmer is pretty much just an interface that will allow you to write a bootloader to your board. In this analogy, the ISP programmer would be sort of like a staffing agency that helps the company hire an interpreter. There are USB-powered ISP programmers for sale on Amazon for pretty cheap. I think I bought mine for around 6 bucks. But using an Arduino as an ISP programmer is pretty simple, so I've never actually used it. In your Arduino IDE, if you go to File, Examples, Arduino ISP, Arduino ISP, there's a free sketch you can upload to your Arduino to turn it into an ISP programmer. As I explained in my Maker Select video, you can write the sketch unmodified to your Arduino Uno, connect pins D10, D11, D12, and D13, as well as the 5 volt and ground pins, to the 6 ISP pins on your printer's mainboard, and then use the Arduino Uno as an ISP to install the bootloader. However, considering my nano bed leveling video walks you through soldering a connector to pins D2, D3, and D4, as well as soldering a wire into D10, I've modified the original Arduino ISP sketch to work with those pins instead. So if you have a nano wired up to work as part of your auto bed leveling system, you can write this sketch to your nano, use it to burn a bootloader to your printer's mainboard, then write the auto bed leveling sketch back to your nano when you're done. I'll add a link to download this modified Arduino ISP sketch in the video description below. You just open the sketch in your Arduino IDE, connect your Arduino Nano to your computer via USB, select the Arduino Nano from the Tools Boards menu, select the correct processor and port to match your Arduino, then click on the Upload button to temporarily turn your Nano into an ISP programmer. Now to use this to burn a bootloader to your printer's board. First, make sure you completely unplug the LCD cable from your printer's mainboard. Then you will need three male to female and three female to female jumper wires. D2, D3, and D4 will connect to the Mozzie, MISO, and SCK pins. D10 will connect to the reset pin, and VN and ground will connect to the 5 volt and ground pins of your printer's mainboard. Just carefully check and double check your connections using the wiring diagram in this picture. Once you're 100% sure it's connected correctly, you will connect both your Arduino and your printer's mainboard to your computer with two separate USB cables. Go to the Tools Boards menu and select the Sanguino board. If Sanguino isn't an option in your Arduino IDE's Boards menu, you'll need to install it. 
You can watch my Maker Select firmware video if you want an explanation on how to do that. Next in the Tools Processor menu, select the ATmega 1284 16MHz option and choose the serial port for your Arduino Nano. Click on Tools again and select Programmer Arduino as ISP. Click on Tools one last time and go down to Burn Bootloader all the way at the bottom. If everything was set up correctly, it will take a minute and then say Done Burning Bootloader in your Arduino IDE. If you don't get that message, you may have selected the wrong port number, or if not, check your wiring again to make sure everything matches the diagram from earlier and that all of the wires are making solid contact. After you're done burning a bootloader to your board, you'll be able to write firmware to your printer at any point in the future without having to open the control box. You can just connect it to your computer through USB cable and upload the firmware from the Arduino IDE. After you've written the firmware to your board and everything's closed back up, you should be good to go with the auto bed leveling. I know I mentioned it earlier, but make sure you do change the sketch in your Arduino Nano back to the auto bed leveling sketch before you try to use it. In the description below, there's a link to the Marlin 116 firmware that I've been working on, and it's pretty much set up and ready to go. However, depending on which sensor mount you choose, you may need to change a couple parts of the configuration.h file. The X, Y, and Z probe offset from extruder constants will need to match the actual distance from your sensor to the tip of your nozzle. Also, you may need to change the left, right, front, and back probe bed position values to match. If you're not sure how to go about doing this, go watch my video explaining how to install a BL Touch on the TiVo Tornado, as I go into detail on how to set this up there. After you've made these changes and uploaded the firmware to your printer, you'll want to make sure your sensor is mounted so that the bottom of the sensor is at least 2mm above the tip of the nozzle. An easy way to accomplish this is by lowering your nozzle to the bed slowly by hand and placing a zip tie flat on the bed under your sensor. Then you can adjust the screws holding your sensor until it's sitting loosely on top of the zip tie and your nozzle is sitting lightly on the bed. That should make sure your sensor is roughly the right height to clear the parts you're printing and still allow it to sense the bed in time. After your sensor is mounted and your firmware is set up, you'll need to adjust the Z offset to make sure your nozzle prints at the right height after the auto bed leveling routine. I made a video explaining how to do this and I'll link it here as well as in the description below. The last step is to change the starting G code in your slicer to run G29 immediately after the G28 command. Again, I've already outlined most of this in my TiVo Tornado BL Touch video, so even if you don't own a Tornado, you may want to watch that video anyway since it has some helpful information that's relevant to any auto bed leveling system. I know there are other ways to add auto bed leveling to your 3D printer, and I plan on trying out the method outlined by Peter Grace in his video, Inductive Sensor Voltage Divider, in an upcoming video. I'll leave a link to his video below in case any of you are interested in checking that out as well. Anyway, feel free to click the like or subscribe button if this video was at all helpful to you. If you or someone you know is looking to buy a new 3D printer and you want to help support the channel, there are some GearBest affiliate links down in the video description for the CR10 and the TiVo Tornado. If there's anything 3D printer related that you guys are interested in seeing me make a video about, leave a suggestion down in the comments section. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time!